You stand before God as though you've never sinned because of your credit score. Dr. Tony Evans says when we stand before the white throne of judgment, our only hope is the clean slate Jesus offers us. So when God looks at the sinner who accepts Christ, he sees on his account perfect righteousness. This is The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, author, speaker, senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and president of The Urban Alternative. Many people think that by becoming Christians, we escape judgment. But today, Dr. Evans explains that we'll all stand before the great white throne. We'll just have very different experiences when we get there. Let's join him as he explains. We spoke about the millennium, the 1,000-year rule of Christ on earth fulfilling the destiny of man. That is to have an earth run by righteousness and history will have fulfilled its destiny. But at the end of the thousand years, we're told in verse seven of Revelation 20 that Satan will be released from his prison and he will come and deceive the nations. Let me explain again. Only believers go into the millennium and millions of people will be born. These millions of people who will be born, many of them will reject Christ's rule, but they won't be able to express it because Jesus will rule with a rod of iron. He will be the righteous dictator and no rebellion will be allowed in the millennial kingdom. So they're going to have to stuff in their rebellious unbelief. Keep it to themselves because if they openly defy, they will be judged immediately with their rod of iron. Yet in a perfect environment run by a sinless person, Jesus Christ, with universal order, men will still reject him. And so at the end of the tribulation, God will release Satan in order to allow people who have rejected him to express their rejection. Which ought to let you know that if in a perfect environment, people can reject Christ with him visibly on earth to be seen, heard, that you don't need the devil to be sinful. The devil really doesn't make you do it. He just frees you up to do it by creating the conditions for it. And so all of the unbelievers at the end of the millennium will be rallied by Satan for the final battle. They will come and gather and surround the camp of the saints and the beloved city that is Jerusalem. So in an instant, at the end of the millennium, When the rebellion occurs, fire comes down from heaven and destroys all the rebels who have joined Satan in his final battle. And then according to verse 10, Satan will join the false prophet and the beast, the Antichrist, and he will be tormented day and night forever and ever in the lake of fire. We have now come to the end of history as you now know it. The millennial kingdom is finished and now it's time for the transfer to the eternal state, heaven and hell. But before the transfer occurs, there will be a transfer event. That event is called the white throne judgment. It is the last courtroom in history and the darkest moment in time. John says in verse 11, a great white throne comes down. I saw a great white throne. It was awesome, great. It was white purity. It was a throne, a king sat on it. When he sees this throne, something else happens. Because he says, when this king who sits on the throne shows up, heaven and earth flees. Let me give you a word for that. 
It's the uncreation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. That's the creation. God did the creation. So God existed prior to the creation in the uncreation because he had not done creation yet. Here you have the rolling back of creation and creation as you know it, the universe as you understand it will evaporate and you will be back now in the uncreation because now we're no longer dealing with time. Now we're in the process of transitioning to eternity. This is a courtroom scene. You've either been in a courtroom or you've seen this judge or that judge on TV deal with people in a courtroom. You've seen movies about courtrooms. This is a courtroom unlike any you've ever seen. Jesus Christ is seated on this throne. In St. John chapter 5, verse 22 and 27, for not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son. Verse 27 says, and he gave him, God gave Jesus authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. So picture it with me. The judge is sitting on the throne. The gavel is hit. Order in the court. The judge is now seated. It's time for the judgment. Who's in the courtroom? We're told. I saw, verse 12, the dead, the great, the small, standing before the throne. Verse 13, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. Every non-Christian in history is going to be summoned. Every unsaved person in history will receive the court and you will show up because you will have been summoned by the king to make sure you show up. God is going to create an unglorified eternal body to house your soul that has been being held in a holding tank. I'll describe that in a moment for this judgment day. This day is not for Christians. It's not for saints, whether Old or New Testament. At this event, only non-believers are there. God is going to call them from the sea. He's going to call them from the grave. And they will receive an unglorified eternal body. This is millions and billions of people because this is accumulation of all the unsaved for all of history. And they will come and meet the judge. From the judge's perspective, the purpose of this judgment is not to determine your eternal destiny. If you are at this judgment, your eternal destiny has already been determined. The purpose of this judgment is only to determine the degree of judgment, not the fact of judgment. You have already been found guilty by being there. For these are only those who have rejected God. But the sentence varies. You go to court and you're found guilty for something. 
Some go to death row. Some go to life imprisonment. Some go to life imprisonment without parole. There are different levels of the judgment of incarceration. Numbers of scriptures in the New Testament says that it's not one level for every body that is equal. There are varying levels of judgment. The Bible says that if you cause other people to stumble, Matthew 18, 6, then your judgment is going to be greater. If you didn't just mess up you, but you messed up other folk, you hurt other folk, you abused other folk, created havoc with other folk, that goes on your deed list and your condemnation will be magnified. Matthew 12, 38 to 40 says some will receive greater condemnation, more hell to pay than others. Luke 12, verse 47 and 48 says that some will be whipped with few lashes, others will be whipped with many lashes. So, hell is not an equal opportunity judgment. He says that they will open the books and everyone, each one, individually, will stand before God. But that's not why you go to hell. You don't go to hell because of what's written in the book. Because that's not the purpose of the book. The purpose of the book has nothing to do with your eternal destiny. The purpose of those books is to decide the level of judgment, not the fact of it. Why does anybody go to hell? Verse 15. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. The people who go to hell go to hell because their name is not in that book. That's different than the deeds. The deeds, how much hell you get. The book is why you're there. You are there because your name's not there. So how can you make absolutely sure that you're not left off the list? Dr. Evans will come back with more about that in a moment when he continues this message from his series, Prophecy and Our World. This 12-part collection digs deep into what the Bible says about the rapture, the tribulation, the second coming, and many more, terms that are often mentioned in church but not always explained. There are also messages on what happens when we die and what it's really like in heaven or in hell. To help you get the full meaning of these vital concepts, we'd like to send you the six CDs in Volume 2 of this series as our gift. All we ask is that you help support Tony's ministry on this station with any contribution. We'll leave the amount up to you. Whatever investment you make will help us continue this broadcast and keep producing faith-building resources. Get details today on the Prophecy and Our World series when you visit TonyEvans.org or call us at one 800 800-3222, where staff members are standing by 24-7 to help you. That's 1-800-800-3222. And be sure to ask about our special conference for coaches coming up on July 8th at AT&T Stadium here in Dallas, home of the Cowboys. Good coaches can play a powerful role in the lives of our kids, not only teaching them how to be winners on the field, but in life as well. Coach Jim Caldwell of the Detroit Lions will be there, along with other coaches and players from the NFL and top-rated colleges, passing along tips on winning games and changing lives. If you know a coach, don't let them miss this life-changing event. It's called the We Coach Conference, and you can get more information by visiting a special website, wecoachconference.com, or by contacting us here at one 800 800 that's 1-800-800-3222. Well, let's get back to today's lesson now. Here's Dr. Evans. Adam was created and he sinned. When he sinned, the Bible says that sin was passed down to the whole human race. So everybody who was born is born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We all sin because we all carry the Adamic nature that includes sin, which is why you don't have to teach people how to sin. You don't have to teach kids how to be selfish. You don't have to teach them how to lie. It's built in. 
and transferred from parent to child and from Adam to the human race. So the whole world is born in sin. But the Bible says Jesus died for the sins of the world before the foundation of the earth. In other words, before Jesus ever entered the earth, God took into account his death. And in taking his death into account, address the original sin of Adam. Because Romans chapter 5 verse 18 says, in Adam all die, but in Christ all are made alive. Let me explain. When God initiated creation, every name of every man, woman, boy, and girl was written in the book of life. Every person. Why? Because 1 John 2, 2 says, he not only died for our sins, he died for the sins of the whole world. So on the cross, even before Jesus got to the cross, God took an account the cross so that the cross, even in the mind of God, would cover Adam's sin. And it's transferred to the human race. Then if that's the case, why does anyone go to hell? Because while the death of Christ covers original sin, it does not cover personal sin where rejection of Christ is involved. In other words, it covers original sin saving you from Adam's condemnation. But personal sin gets covered when you accept Christ. So original sin is covered, therefore babies are covered, until the age of accountability. What's the age of accountability? It's when you can understand that you are a sinner, that you have sinned, and you have the capacity to respond to the gospel. Once you hit that age of accountability, which varies from person to person based on where they live and what they've been exposed to, once you hit that age of accountability, the death of Christ has made you savable. But you must accept him to be saved from your personal sin. So you can't blame Adam for your spiritual condition. Jesus covered that one. Your spiritual condition has to do with your personal decision to respond or reject the good news of the gospel. If you live out your life and reject Jesus Christ, your name is erased from the book of life. The death of Jesus Christ got your name in it. But if there is the rejection of Jesus Christ, your name is erased out of it. So there will be, at this judgment, millions and millions of people who will be looking for a name that's not there. Because they never responded to Jesus Christ for personal forgiveness. No doubt people will make claims on that day about their goodness because they'll say, look at that deed. You see that on that page in the book? By my name, look at what I did then. Look at what I did then. Look at what I did then. Well, let me explain the problem. The problem is God's standard is perfection. And God cannot lower his standard and still be who he is. He can't do that. The reason why he's going to destroy, he's going to uncreate the creation is to get rid of any molecule of sin. This world has been cursed by sin and God must get rid of it so he's going to burn it all up so that there is no sin ever again. So he's going to wipe out creation in order to wipe out sin. He's going to place the false prophet, the antichrist, Satan, into the lake of fire. So the issue of sin will never show up again. Because he cannot dumb down his requirement. In basketball, if you've got a bad shot, you may miss the backboard and the rim. Sometimes you hit the rim and the ball rolls around the rim, but doesn't go in. 
whether you missed it by a long shot, whether it rolled around the rim and looked like it was going in and popped out, you don't get two points. It has got to go in the hoop in order for you to get the credit. Because that's the standard of the game. In football, the ball has got to cross the plane of the goal. Being on the one inch line does not give you seven points. So the fact that you were better than your neighbor, shot closer than your neighbor, ran more yards than your neighbor is irrelevant to this judge. Because his standard at the great white throne is a standard of perfection. Every non-Christian, your brother, your mother, your sister, your friends, your co-workers, who have not come to faith in Jesus Christ will be at this judgment. You will not be able to bring anybody in to vouch for you. You'll not be able to bring character witnesses in. It's a private meeting between you and God. The book will be open. Your name's not there. That validates eternal destiny. He looks at the books to determine the level of it. There are no second chances. It is eternal in nature. On the cross, God took the sins of the whole world and credited them to Jesus Christ. Which is why Jesus uttered the words, to tell us thy, the Greek phrase meaning paid in full. God had to get payment for sin. So all the sins of everybody who has ever lived were coupled and cupped and handed over. And the wrath of God, the Bible says, was laid on him by credit because he had no sin of his own. God then says to every man, woman, boy, and girl, if you will, at this age of understanding, accept my son as your substitute, I will credit back to you his righteousness. For he who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus Christ has perfect righteousness because he who has no sin. So when God judged Jesus, he took the sin of the whole world, dumped it on Jesus Christ, and to the sinner who accepts Jesus Christ, he takes the perfection of Jesus Christ and credits it to the sinner's account. So when God looks at the sinner who accepts Christ, he sees on his account perfect righteousness. You stand before God as though you've never sinned because of your credit score. The credit of Christ has been transferred to your account, which is why when God judges you at the judgment seat of Christ, if you're a Christian, it only has to do with your reward. It cannot deal with your sin because if it dealt with your sin, you wouldn't even be there. It can only deal with your reward because your righteousness has been credited. Dr. Tony Evans, talking about what will happen on that day when you stand before the white throne of judgment. Now, we had to shorten this message to fit into our broadcast time today, but we want you to hear everything Tony had to say. So we've included the full-length version in our current CD series, Prophecy and Our World. Remember, as I mentioned earlier, all six CDs in Volume 2 of this collection are yours with our thanks when you make a contribution of any amount to help us keep bringing you this broadcast each day. Just visit TonyEvans.org today and get the details on the Prophecy and Our World series. Again, that's TonyEvans.org. Staff members are also standing by in our phone center to help you with resource requests. You can reach them day or night at one 800 800 3222. That's 1 800 800 3222. Some people say life's too short to be religious. Tomorrow, Dr. Evans explains why eternity's too long not to be as he takes a look at what happens when we die. Be sure to join us. The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans is brought to you by The Urban Alternative and is made possible by the generous contributions of listeners like you.